Hi everyone. So today I wanted to pop in to talk to you about a topic that's um, a little bit serious. Uh, it's I wanted to talk to you a little bit about grief. And a lot of you are grieving the death or the loss of a particular loved one who's really close to you. This uh, grief can be also about the loss of a certain way of life or a job or even when you um, separate, when you go through a divorce or a separation or anything like that, you can also experience a form of grief. So I've, I've invited my dear friend, Laura Berman today to speak a little bit about the topic because um, she has developed some tools to deal with grief because she suffered a very sudden and traumatic loss a couple of years ago. So I have invited Laura to speak a little bit about this tough topic and to address address it for all of you. Hi, Laura. Thank you so much for agreeing to be to be on my channel today. You know me. I'm. It's always an honor to play with you and to talk and to be welcome on your platform. I'm so grateful. Well, thank you. And first. I want you to introduce yourself to the audience and tell us a little bit about you and your background, because to me, you are my dear friend who I love seeing <laughs> and I enjoy catching up with you over lunch. Yeah. And I know that um, a couple of years ago, you went through something really traumatic, which broke my heart as well. Yeah. Um, but let's start with a little bit about who you are and your background. Well, I mean, I'm a 30 year sex, love and relationship therapist. Um, I've done it all. I was Oprah's sex, love and relationship girl. I've written nine books. I've had several television shows and most of my career has been really, and still is really centered around helping people love and be loved better, not just from a mind and body relationship perspective, but really from a spiritual perspective as well. Um, and so that's always been my passion. That's been my focus. And then, as you know, um, I mean, we've all suffered losses, uh, and I certainly, you know, have, uh, experienced grief before in my own life, losing both my parents and many other loved ones. And also as a therapist, you know, working with individuals and couples, a lot of my work, obviously grief would come up and I knew how to address it clinically. And I knew to a certain extent how to apply that to myself, but the the roof was blown off <laughs> two and a half years ago um, when my beloved 16 year old son, Sammy, was murdered with fentanyl poisoning on February 7th, um, 2021. So I, you know, you were there then and were such a huge part of my support system and you know as you know your work has been a huge part of my healing but um it was it's the deepest and widest pain i have ever 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 experienced so what happened was just out of necessity I mean, necessity is the mother of invention right so i had to figure out i mean i can say this to this audience i don't necessarily you know say this when i go on Good Morning America or whatever. But within a week of him dying, I was sitting on the beach, and where is, which is my healing spot and just crying. And I heard a voice in my head and I know things and see things, you know, you, like, but I don't hear things. I'd never heard things before. And I heard, do you want to live or die? And I, well, first of all, I was shocked at that question, but then I immediately had this like, intense awareness of what an amazing gift it is to be alive despite all of my pain. It's a miracle. I was really somehow in touch in that moment with the miracle that life is. And so I said, yes, I want to live. It's a gift. I don't want to give that gift up, even though I don't know how to live. And they said, well, you need to go off into the woods by yourself and start feeling all the pain. And um, so I went to my poor husband and my son i have two son remaining sons but the youngest was still at home and said i gotta go or i'm gonna die <laughs> i'm going into the redwoods for a week um and that week was the beginning of a whole new level of healing that i didn't know was available to me and something that i've continued to cultivate 
and teach other people. Because what I've really become aware of is that none of us have any freaking idea how to grieve and every single one of us is grieving something. Yes, yes, wow, that was very, very well said. And, and I will never forget the day that I heard about Sammy because you and I were hanging out a lot and then, and I would see him in the house and, uh, and then suddenly to get that news, that was, that just, it, it blew me. It just really blew me. I did not believe it. I, I didn't even know what to say to you, but of course I reached out immediately as soon as I heard. And, um, you know, nothing prepares you for that level of grief. Yeah. And yet people grieve um, for different things. Like even if somebody gets, let's say, a really scary diagnosis and the doctor yeah. tells them that they've got three months to live. Now that's something I experienced. There is a grief. There's grief from your family members. There's a grief from yourself, the person who gets the diagnosis, because you're grieving the loss of a way of life. And here somebody is telling you that that's never, you're never going to get that back again. Mm. You're just not going to get that back. So um, there's a lot of healing and, and grief comes in so many different forms. So many forms. Yes. Yeah. I mean, what's a lost opportunity, a lost relationship. There's so much grief coming out of COVID, not just because of the lives lost. There's so much grief in the world right now with the way things are happening, you know, yeah. in the Middle East. So we're all struggling with some form of grief for sure. And it doesn't have to be the worst kind of grief when you lose as a, for a parent, when you lose your child. But, um, but that's been really striking to me. Um, and also you, you know, you said you don't know what to say. That's also part of it is that we don't know how to grieve and part of that is why we don't know how to support others when they're that's grieving. a that's a huge one uh, most people i would have to say most people don't know how to support others yeah. through through their grief that's a it's very hard because you almost feel like whatever i say is not going to be enough right and so the what i learned to do is to just hold space and just to be there and just to be whatever the other person the grieving person needed me to be and so i had no answers i offered no solutions no answers nothing just allowed myself to just be there in that space helping to just expand the love and that's all i felt i could offer and that's not all, that's everything. I mean, that's all you have to do is show up and, and people avoid it because they're afraid they're gonna make it worse or they're afraid or they don't know what to say or they're afraid they're gonna say the wrong thing. All you have to do is show up and be willing to sit with their pain. And I think for a lot of us, if we haven't learned to do that for ourselves, then it's really hard to sit with someone else's pain you're you do that beautifully as a human being but not everyone can do that i actually made a guide um i wasn't even thinking about this when we made the plan when we just decided to do this but i made a guide it's on my website if you go to drlauraberman.com it's a free guide to about how to help others who are grieving so if a loved one or a friend has had a tremendous loss and you want some ideas of how to support them or how best to support them just go to my website um, and it's right there on the homepage. It's free. Wow, that that would be very helpful for people. So yeah, I highly recommend people do that. So yes, would you like to share some tips that you've yeah. developed, some tips and tools for our audience? Either tips for people who are grieving or tips for people who are helping others to grieve. Yeah. Well, I think these the tips that are just, I'm just gonna let what wants to come through come through. Um, but I think they'll help both, right? Because for me, you know, what I have learned, I've, I've spent most of my life avoiding pain and so afraid of pain um, and doing my best to get through it as quickly as I can or to bypass it or to positive think it away or whatever was needed. And what this has taught me, I think, because the pain is so wide and deep is that grief is actually a profound, portal of transformation if you are willing to go through it and in my case i really learned this because i had no choice i needed to survive and so i i heard the message and understood that i needed to go all the way into my pain and i was scared poopless to do that and what i mean by going all the way into the pain is that with support so i had somatic healing therapists um you know help guide me but i literally and now i teach people how to do this too but i literally 
uh, started doing breath work, started moving into my body and started allowing myself to drop all the way into the pain. And I was scared to do this like we all are because I imagined if I let myself go all the way there, I ain't coming back. You know, I'm just gonna stay there. But what I immediately learned, and it has continued to be true, is that if you let yourself go all the way in and feel whatever needs to be felt in that moment, it's not about even thinking, it's about following your body and letting yourself cry or scream or beat the crap out of a bunch of pillows, like whatever your body wants to do, let it flow, let it out. After about 10 minutes or so, maybe 15, it will subside. And it's like your frequency just goes zoop and you feel lighter. It's like a pressure valve has released. You feel lighter, you feel clearer, you feel calmer. And that is always when I can really connect with Sammy. So I'll get to that in a second. The, but that's one thing is being brave enough and willing to go in. You can't go around under or over the pain. You have to go through it if you want the transformative power to happen. Um, and the healing to happen because yeah. you can't really heal without doing that. And, you know, the second is to really understand that it is not a straight line. You know, you talk, you hear about the stages of grief. There are stages, but they double back on each other. You know, yeah. you're kind of like, it's not a straight line as it takes. And one of the things that I found is so hard for people who are grieving is that the rest of the world is ready for them to have moved on before they've moved on. You yeah. Know? And you're allowed to take as long as you need to take. There's no expiration date. There's no due date. Um, the other is to find community. You know, community, I wasn't a big group person. I ran groups, uh, but I wasn't a big, let me join a therapy group thing. And I actually started a group thinking it was an act of service for grieving mamas, because I was hearing from thousands of them after what happened to Sammy. And I was like, okay, I'm just gonna do this grieving mama meetup, let's go and meet me at Tower 25 on Santa Monica Beach on this day, you know, and I didn't know who would come. And when I saw 20 women walking down the beach to me, I started bawling and I was so shocked at myself. And in that moment, I realized, oh my goodness, duh, this is for me too. There's something so healing and beautiful about being in the presence of people with whom words aren't necessary they just completely intimately understand the unique nature of your pain. You don't have to explain yourself. You don't have to be okay. And to have a group like that, even a few people like that in your life is an unbelievable gift. And I was someone who had people like you who could hold it and were fine with me being a hot mess. But there was something so, and continues to be something so profoundly healing about being with other mothers who have experienced the same thing or whatever your grief is to be with other people who understand loss and are experienced it themselves and are going through what you're going through is so, so healing. Yeah. I'll bet it is. So that's super important. What yeah. you just said about building community that. Yeah. Is and the Sammy thing, you know, what I've learned and you know, this already is that when we cross over, you know, obviously we leave the density of our body behind, but energy never yeah. lies or dies is what I meant to say, but it never lies too. Um, and that's really what I wrote about in quantum love, right? That energy is eternal, this, you know, and we're made of pure energy. So it doesn't, it can't be made or destroyed. Energy literally can't be created or destroyed. It can only change forms. So when we die, our bodies go, the form our energy took goes, but our energy remains and it expands. And it's such a high frequency, so much higher than really our human bodies can reach in any sustainable way. But when I have those big releases or when I'm doing something that allows me to be in my joy, it's like, I, you know, he's way up here and I'm way down here. Yes. And he can't get down here. He can try, he sends me signs, whatever. But when I release or do something that brings, moves me into an energy of joy, he can meet me in the middle. Exactly. And that's always when I can connect with him. So I think that's so important for people to understand is that your, your loved ones are right there beyond the veil. They're just at a much higher, more rapid frequency than you are. Exactly, 100%. I'm so happy you, you shared that because that is a huge part of uh, my message to people. It's, uh, and it's what I always share, and it's what I'll be sharing this Saturday as well at, at our event. Um, and it's so important 
to to actually raise your frequency your vibe your level of energy to a level where they can reach you so you're getting more messages and we tend to be at that level when we are fully at this space of surrendering so sometimes we come to this frequency completely by accident as you did when you got the message do you want to live or do you want to die and that is incredible because i have a very similar experience that happened to me a couple of years ago but you completely surrendered yourself at that time you were you had nowhere to go yeah. but but up you were ready i'd say you were ready to die i were and so that does incredible things to your frequency and it blows you wide open and that's when they get messages to you however i don't recommend that people <laughs> strive to get to that no. point there <laughs> no. are so many ways to get to that frequency through walking in nature listening to certain types of music um just opening up emotionally there's so many tools and tips which i know you have and i have so i'm so glad you shared that about the frequency cuz i get people all the time who say my loved one has not sent me any messages and so we actually really have to open ourselves up they're trying believe me they're yeah, trying they and i know sammy is sending you messages oh, he all does the time all the time yeah. and we have i mean he blinks the lights he sends me monarchs which i know is wayne's sign too sometimes when we're together we see a bunch of monarchs um and, you know, I think it's also one of the, you, you mentioned our event on Saturday, which I'm so excited about. And I hope people come if you're in the LA area, it's called Good Grief Day. And both Anita and I have it in our, the link in our bios uh, on Instagram, but um, you're gonna be there obviously, which I'm so excited about. And also a medium who I'm so excited for you to meet. I think, I, I, I think you guys are gonna be friends. She is astounding, this woman, Susan Grau. And um, one of the things, you know, that she talks about is this idea of like welcoming in signs. And I remember when I first met her, it was because I interviewed her on my podcast and she just started giving me, I wasn't asking for messages, but she started giving me messages from Sammy. And the day before I had seen, uh, I'd been hiking and I'd seen lizards doing this like thing that, that I kept saying to my friend, this looks like push-ups. Why are lizards doing push-ups? I found out later that I'd never seen it before and I hike all the time, but I found out later that is sometimes a form of mating, although it wasn't their mating season. Anyway, fast forward a couple of weeks, I'm talking to Susan and she's like, oh, Sammy is saying that those lizards doing push-ups was him, you know, just giving you a wink and playing with, you know, like being playful, which he is all the time. He does weird playful stuff all the time. So I think part Part of it is that when we're in these really dark places and or if we aren't open to it, we don't see the signs. Like when my mom died, I made an intention. So this was 10 years ago and it was winter, like, you know, February in Chicago. And I was like, okay, mom, I'm gonna choose a sign for you that isn't like something I would be likely to see. So I know it's you, I'm gonna choose a hummingbird. You know, I'm not gonna see a hummingbird in February in Chicago. I've never even seen a hummingbird in Chicago. And I go downstairs after that, 10 minutes later, and my kids who were little at the time are watching the Nature Channel, a documentary on hummingbirds. Wow. And every, every day for a year, I either saw someone, I saw a picture of a hummingbird or someone had a, a painting behind them of a hummingbird or something like every day for a year, at least I saw a hummingbird. And now I know, because I've noticed that, and this is what part of being aware of the signs are, I've noticed that if I'm, if I'm speaking to someone or like even now, if I were outside with you having this conversation, a hummingbird will sh show up when I'm speaking the truth. It's like my mother is saying, hell yeah, that is it. Or if I'm questioning something and trying, I'm like, should I do this? And then a hummingbird will come by. I'm like, okay, there's my confirmation. What? Thanks mom. <laughs> <You know? laughs> wow. That's, that's really beautiful. That's incredible. So, you know, I, I love this topic of signs and talking about mediums and communicating with the other side and giving them tools to communicate with us. And what I've loved is, as you know, you and I have been talking about the presentations uh, for this coming Saturday. And even though it's called Good Grief Day, I just wanted to take this opportunity to say that it isn't going to be a sad day about grieving. I want people to know that it's going to be 
very uplifting, very educational. It's, it's going to be a day where you're going to actually realize that your loved ones on the other side are doing incredibly well. They're really happy. And some of us are going to give you tips on how to recognize their signs. And there's going to be a medium and, and so on. So it's actually going to be a really, really fun day that I'm excited about. So I wanted people to know that. Oh, yeah, and, for sure. And also, I, you mentioned a couple of days ago that um, you're offering scholarships mm -hmm. for people. So I, I wanted you to share a little bit more. So I would definitely highly recommend anyone in the area to please, you know, try and come. Yeah, we so. have so many great people, not to, I mean, Anita's the greatest, but, <laughs> but we have so many great people coming. But um, I purposely wanted to do this around the holidays because this is a time that all of us can struggle, especially if we've had loss. And we were charging and are charging for tickets, not because any of us, including Anita, any of us are getting paid. We're mm -hmm. all volunteering our time, but all of the ticket sales and all of the proceeds go toward a scholarship fund to bring grieving mamas, even though the day is for anyone who's had any kind of loss, this Saturday is an event for anyone. I'm planning a retreat uh, for mamas who have lost their children, a four day retreat. And uh, I'm trying to raise the money so mamas without means can come. So this event was an act of service and a hope to raise the money to do that. But what's most important and the whole reason we're doing this is to get people the support they need and to give access to people. So um you know i've opened it up recently because i've realized that a lot of people with the holidays and the economy as it is can't afford the ticket so if you can come and want to come dm me or put a message here and i'll reach out to you or whatever um and i will try to you know to get you in because we want everyone who i mean obviously if you can buy a ticket buy it because you're not just helping yourself you're helping grieving mamas and you're helping the world because my mama's okay, everyone's okay. But if you can't pay, definitely let me know. And, and uh, yeah, and I just want to say, you know, thank you for doing this and for creating this event and for putting your time into it. And I just wanted to reiterate, none of us are getting paid. Mm -hmm. Every cent is going to go towards your cause for grieving mamas. Yeah. You know, and and one of the things I'm just looking at some of the comments, I just want to say, you know, a lot of people are saying that they're not sure. I think these are such great points because I'm this, I was the same way, you know, is it, what if it's, I'm not sure it's the sign? How do I know it's the sign? You know, one of the things that Susan Grau, who will be there Saturday taught me is that they are sending you signs all the time. They are. And if you doubt the sign, it doesn't mean they will stop sending you signs, but they will stop sending that sign. They'll be like, oh, she doesn't believe that a cat that just crossed her path was trying to tell her something or remind her of something. So I won't do that. I'll try to think, you know, I'll think of something else, right? And they'll keep moving the mark until you, so the less, it, it is an act of faith, but if you take the leap of faith and you're like, okay, that was you, you know, hi, Sammy. Like when he started blinking the lights a week after, all of a sudden my bedside lamp started blinking. I wanted to be like, no, that's just the light bulb needs to be changed. I change the light bulb, it keeps blinking. I'm like, oh, it's just the electric, something's wrong with the lamp. And then I was finally like, why am I doing this? So I started saying, Sammy, you stop it. I'm trying to read, you know, and I would like have these conversations with him. And then it kept happening. So, um, and you know, I've changed the lamp. It happens, right? It's the same thing with the other signs. It's a decision, just like faith is. Faith is a decision to believe in that which you can't prove. But when yeah. you take that leap of faith, they give you even more. It's the same thing with your guides. And you talk about this all the time, that you have to ask them for help. You have to invite them in. And then you have to believe, right? Yes. And if you don't, it doesn't mean they're not there all the time anyway, being like, we're ready to help. But you know, and their, but when their you, love is always flowing into you, but you won't feel it until you accept it. Yeah. When you believe you're actually making it easier for them to send you more and more signs. And you'll notice that once you start believing, more and more things will happen to confirm the belief because you've just opened the door to make it easier. But when you don't believe, you're actually making it harder for them. And then they have to go and find something else and something else. And so the... So even if you err on the side of believing when it's not a sign, you're still helping them energetically yes. 
to communicate with you. So yeah, that's a really good point and so true. It's what I have found to be true too. Yeah. Um, and we are going to be talking about so much more of this because I plan to bring this in and I know that um, a lot of the other speakers are going to be speaking about the signs. And this is what, when, if I get like a Q and A or something for the last 15, 20 minutes of my speech, I will be asking the audience, like, tell me the signs that you've had. And, and so I think that um, this is such a great topic. Everybody loves this topic and it is so comforting yeah. to know that our loved ones are still here and helping yeah. us. And everything about this day is about healing and opening the channels and releasing the density that's holding us back from not only connecting with our loved ones, but from healing and from kind of moving through because this is a metamorphosis. Grief is an invitation to metamorphosis, profound, beautiful transformation. And you don't have to just survive it. You can actually thrive beyond it. And I'm proof of that because I've yeah. had the worst freaking loss there is. And here I am thriving and happy and excited and transformed in many ways, transformed more attuned and more tapped in and tuned in than I ever would have been otherwise. Not that I recommend it, no. but, <laughs> but it you, can be used as a portal yeah. for sure. Yeah. You're, you're an inspiration, Laura. You really are. So I want to thank you for everything you do and for your con contribution to the world. Oh, and um, so many grieving people are so much better off for you being in this world. So Aww, and you too, love. <laughs> you do the same thing. I'm so grateful. And I'm excited to play with you and, awesome. and help help spread the healing and the love and the elevation to people this Saturday. Yes. It looks Great. like Abby, Abby posted it's this Saturday, December 2nd in Hermosa Beach. Come join us. Yes. And I can't wait to see you there, Laura. Okay. So thank you, thank you so much. And um, yes, and I hope to see a lot of you that have tuned in. And if you have loved ones who, um, who are grieving, please share this video with them. Thank you all so much. Bye.